What's up, denizens of the interwebs? It is the early hours of Sunday morning here in Los Angeles, but in Asia, it's Overwatch time. I'm Mitch Leslie, joined here by Matthew Morello. Once again, back-to-back late-night matches here. Oh, yeah. Again, the, the Asia regions, Matt, uh, has shown us some incredible games the last couple of weekends. Last night was quite exciting, and we get uh, around two of that tonight. Yeah, I'm happy I'm actually up casting these instead of up watching them and then trying to turn around and wake up in the morning to cast <laughs> I stay up and watch a lot of these games anyway, but uh, some really good matches today. Uh, the first one to kick things off with Hangzhou and Chengdu. Uh, I think the big one of the day, though, I think uh, people are calling it like the, the best match of the season probably thus far uh, between Shanghai and Seoul be today as well. Yeah, that one is going to be a blockbuster. We have a little bit of a taste tester for you guys now between the Hangzhou Spark and the Chengdu Hunters. Matt, we got to see Chengdu last night against the NYXL, and they uh, were not really up to the challenge, so yeah. it seems. Uh, that's a good way to put it. We saw them. Uh, it wasn't very long. Fleetingly, uh, we saw them, yes. As NYXL did, did a lot of work against Chengdu, but we'll talk about Hangzhou first. Is, uh, Hangzhou's been a team where last season they were very strong during GOATS. You can make an argument, you know, number three, number four team last year. Uh, this year, it seems like they've gotten off to a little bit of a slow start. Better division, I think, overall. More competition that they have to play against consistently. And then I also think one thing they struggled with last year was with, like, meta changes and kind of adapting it on the fly. I think Hero Pools really gives some trouble with that. But when you still have Gushui in the mix as the main tank and, you know, God's B and Damage Dealer role, uh, you, you and IDK, I mean, you have the pieces to make this work. Yeah, I mean, obviously last year there was a lot of interfacing between sort of No Smite uh, and, and Gushui as the main tank here. Hangzhou, uh, this will be their third matchup against the Chengdu Hunters uh, so far this season. A lot of the teams interregionally are playing quite a bit, and they haven't lost to them yet. Uh, the last outing was actually pretty one-sided. Before that, Chengdu managed to make it a five-member affair. So with these two teams, there is always the potential uh, to go down to the wire. The Spark, uh, you know, were playing a lot of Lucio Moira up until this point. Obviously, you can't play Moira right now. She's yeah. out of rotation, so... Uh, for them, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how do they sort of respond to that. Uh, as you'll see, the lineup today, they actually have Coldest in here, who was, was known primarily as a Zenyatta player. We've seen him a little bit already this season, but he hails from Billy Billy, actually one of the Chinese players on this roster. Uh, so, I mean, Hangzhou, they're in the middle of the pack, much like Chengdu. Right, right. but with Chengdu, I think you almost feel like every one of their games is, it's going to be close, it's going to be a fiesta down on the wire, or it's going to be 45 minutes. And they're going Max. to be losing. Yeah, so uh, I, it'll be interesting to see what Chengdu we get today. Uh, they did not look good a lot of the day yesterday against NYXL. And I think a lot of it was because of the rosters that they had to put out with different types of compositions. It was easily readable. Uh, maybe they have some adjustments here today against Hangzhou. Yeah, that's what I want to do tonight, Matt. Keep seeing if we can actually read, uh, you know, Chengdu based on their substitutions. Um, you know, you, you felt like, especially when it came to the damage dealers or, or, uh, and, their, and their tanks as well between Aiting and Amon, that it was fairly clear to see what kind of style they were trying to go for. I mean, look, if I'm if I'm telling you what they're going to run and I can tell it, it before the game starts and I'm not playing in this region, I, <laughs> I've never played against the Chengdu Hunters, I'm sure these teams who have played them three times already know exactly what's going to happen when some of these subs come in and when they see certain lineups in certain weeks with hero pools. And, uh, of course, our map pool will be Li Zhang Tower to start things off. Paris, then Route 66, and then Hollywood, Busan, Crazy maps if required. Series. Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, we, you think Paris Route 66, that uh, seems like it could be up in Chengdu's wheelhouse. We, we, well, yeah, Chengdu played Paris yesterday, though, uh, against yes, the NYXL. They, they, it, it was not good uh, <laughs> against NYXL. It was actually Evil Tile quite frequently getting caught. It was uh, Dorado, the same yeah. uh, situation as well. He was, you know, playing well, very aggressively, look. but, you know, when he was done, then there was nowhere to run, no way to run for the rest of the Hunters. And, and I think, uh, I think Chengdu's better than what we saw yesterday, clearly. Uh, it's just how much can they have uh, improved within a day? Maybe maybe we see them actually play really strong here and defeat Hangzhou, and then we kind of attribute more to that match as NYXL showing their dominance yet again. So we'll have to see. Uh, I, I would be thrilled if we see Gu Shui on Winston. I mean, just a tremendous Winston player as... Looks like Hangzhou potentially want to play the Forest Sombra. Really good dive combination on this map. You make a lot of things work with them. Interesting. Okay, yeah. The you, cannot play you cannot play Symmetry. You cannot play Symmetry here if you leave. Surely not. It, it, it'd be hard. As uh, It looks like they're already going to go back and make some changes. So interesting. As soon as they see Chengdu back up to go make the change to McCree, 
Hangzhou kind of calls the bluff, and they go back, and this is going to be a force switch from Hangzhou. In Hangzhou is really just kind of counterpicking them here, right? They see Chengdu change. Chengdu are changing Chengdu as well. Chengdu goes back, they <laughs> change. I mean, no, no blows have even been struck, ha and these two teams are just Hangzhou trying to game each other. Gonna be, Hangzhou is going to be so confused that they're going to get the point at this. Like, th they probably expected to give up percentage and then have to work their way in with the double shield in the May. But they end up getting the composition they want, and they get it for free. Pretty, uh, it's it's kind of kind of crazy. Well, here. Chengdu has to hope they pick the right comp map because there is no time to go back to the point. A losing fight here will put them further and further behind the eight ball. Already, Coldest getting a little bit of scrutiny as Amon rolls straight on through the environmental, almost getting knocked off there. I think IDK somehow managing to stay alive. Coldest has gone down, but Elsa has been demected, so Amon needs to do a lot of work. To try and pile driver and knock people off the map here. Found that one. And again, continuing to displace Hangzhou. He needs to be dealt with. But in the meantime, Molly falls for Chengdu. It's going to be hard for Chengdu to flip this point, though, as you still have IDK alive, you have Rhea, you have Gushui, while well, he just falls. But having the Sigma alive with a Lucio, you're going to be able to extend this a little bit further. So when, when Chengdu starts picking up a lot of those kills, you know, it's 20 something percent on the point for Hangzhou. They're able to get another 25% or so out of it. So, uh, pretty good there for Amon, Hangzhou. Amon has 14 players knocked back, Matt. Already. <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, that's expected, right? I mean, when he's. Uh, you, you know how good he is on ball. I mean, if he wasn't good on ball, we'd never see him. Uh, so, he, he's got to be effective when he plays that hero. Okay. Uh, Hangzhou. A bit frazzled after that fight, surely. Uh, no real changes in comp except for Rhea switching off of the Sigma. Now, the Shatter is so free here after this. Yeah, uh, EMP oh, though, no. you can't use the Shatter. Not in this kind of fight. And so Hangzhou, I mean, I guess it's a way of enforcing them. Kind of like when you get taxed, it's like an enforced savings plan. Uh, you know, not, <laughs> yeah. not quite different there. Like Hangzhou are in a position now where they can build some ultimates, but I think they're happy enough with that to let an EMP go. Well, I mean, Hangzhou ends up using Sound Barrier too, right? So, really hurts him. Don't have that ult to get through potentially this Dragon Blade that comes up. But there's a lot you can do with the Dragon Blade here. You can, right, you can get Gushui to shatter Jinmu. There, there's a lot that you have potentially to counter it. As Rhea goes behind the point, he'll get a touch. Good timing from Jinmu to go for the uh, deflect there. Godsby before to get the flash. This self destruct. Oh, yep. <laughs> Elsa's going to catch Godsby. Hangzhou tried to filter out with the left side of the point, but there was nowhere to run. And Chengdu. This is what they do best, 70% and counting. There's a Dragon Blade coming in the next fight. Now, they do burn both support ultimates. Coldest switching off the honor to the Zen. Wholesale changes here for Hangzhou. Yeah, and they go Brig as well. Uh, they're they're going to bring in a lot of changes, and this is going to be to get on the point they want to dive. And to, to be quite frank, when you have Gu Shui and you know how good of a Winston player he is, and Chengdu's kind of playing this more dive-centric comp, you may as well play in your strengths as they're trying to force the meta. Molly. Very safely, no both supports the position quite close to each other, even though the Hunters are all sensibly split. They're just gonna, gonna try and keep Aemon alive as long as possible and wait for the pincer to come through. Dragon Blade, yeah, you better believe it. Jinmu towards the point, already a de-suited Diva there. Rhea fell afoul of some of that minefield and there's no chance for Hunter to touch the point. Aemon, a, a zoning continuing, Dragon Blade. continuing to just uh, lay a foundation of complete Chad behavior. Yeah, it's, uh, we were on with Jinmu most of the time, and he's just standing there just swinging his blade in the choke so that nobody can make their way through. So Chengdu win that first point. We'll see if they can. This would be a huge map for Chengdu after how they performed yesterday. Getting a map under your belt here would be massive. And Hunters now know, okay, so our wheelhouse, where we feel comfortable, we are the ones that have definitely shaken the spark. They're on the back foot. So we can just keep playing what we like to play. Anything that works around the Wrecking Ball is good. 18 sitting on the sideline like, well, that's fine. I mean, ball is allowed to be played. Oh, let it go. See if this uh, yep. sim is maintained here for... No, um, maybe not. Again, if you're not expecting Reinhardt or Double Shield, don't worry about it. Uh, I mean, they use the sim TP to actually go back and change heroes, which is uh, quite interesting. Get, they get a little bit faster back to the spawn as... Are they going to play the Sim? I oh, know they're going to play the McCree. So, McCree May for the Chengdu Hunters. Very uh, meta here with the uh, double shield. And then Hangzhou, they're going to be staying on this die for at least the beginning. So, they'll get the point, then they'll get a few fights potentially. Okay. I like how Chengdu's composition looks here. I like it a lot. It's Soldier 76 and a double shield. I think many people on in ranked have uh, experienced that, attempting to, to make him count over the last year or so. 
Fedora, well, again, it's, it's pretty tough to get in behind these shields, get hacks, get meaningful uh, engagements with this Sombra, but the Hunters can play compact close together and move to the point. Well, the Spark have to find out how to unravel it. The, the advantage the Spark have here is control of the point, right? Like, they don't have to go in and play super aggro and take the point back. They just need to jump on like how you see Gushrei and Rhea do, and they just have to keep contesting, contesting, contesting. Chung Du's the one who needs to make a play. Molly managing to stay alive, repair pack hastily being deployed by Evil Tile and leave. He's got so many shields to hit be sit behind, and he's still taking so much damage. IDK's trying to come up to the point now. He's the transcendence for the spark. They need to find those priority targets, though, before this time's out, and they get crushed. Leave comes forward. Cold has got fanned into oblivion, and it has to be a defensive translocate by Adora. Not much left to be done here for the spark. They have to switch something up. Well, if you're the spark, you just keep throwing your ultimates in, and you just pray that Chengdu uses board here. Is, yep, yep. There goes Look at that. The shatter here. 56% is... and you force ultimates out of the Hunter's map. Yep, I mean, they, they end up using a, f a few ultimates in that fight to the Hunters. As though the fight goes for so long, they're going to build some back up. But you expect Hangzhou potentially to make some changes out of this. Ah, I didn't expect yeah. these to be the changes, though, with the Far of Mercy in play. So you'll stay on the tanks because you're close to ultimates, and you have EMP, where if you can get rid of both of these shields, Gushrei and Rhea could cause a lot of problems, right? EMP, you have a biotic grenade in there for your tanks, no shields for them. Dora lands an EMP. It's going to connect with the Reef. Yeah, Leave was already getting dived on by the time that EMP came through. Adora is able to play but, outside of the Snow Dome for the time being. Godspeed just trying to hover over the house and find some of these picks here. Two down for the Hunters, and Elsa's trying to push this Far Mercy combination. Chengdu still in control of the point. Their comp is built for longer fights, so now that they're in control, you can just see how oppressive it can be. <laughs> the EMP's not, the EMP's not great. Uh, I believe he connects with two players there. Uh, it, he doesn't get either of the tanks. Well, they find leave though, so the, uh, one of the main sources of damage for Hangzhou is gone. Uh, sorry, for Chengdu, should I say. Yeah, but at that point, I mean, you're, you're better off going for the EMP on the tanks, right? Because you have then the, the dive to follow that up. You have a lot of ability to take those players out, which makes it difficult. Mm. Now we see Godspeed with the rocket barrage over the top. Doesn't connect with anything either. It got to be almost expecting Leave to push forward, I think. No one actually came into uh, that barrage at all, but patience tends to pay off here. Godspeed just sits up in the sky outside the door, and the Hunters, you know, they try and get something started with their less mobile composition, and they walk straight into the rockets. So now that the Spark have another EMP here, let's see if they can get a better use of it as Chengdu. They don't have any support ults. They'll have a shatter here to work with. If, if you're Hangzhou and you can get a free fight here with EMP, and if Chengdu kind of just throws one of these ultimates in at the same time, you're able to win it. Hangzhou's in a great position to take this point. Leave needs to find picks early in this fight now. Getting rid of Coldest would be huge. Rhea could be a problem, but not anymore. Defense Matrix isn't going to protect him against the Earth Shadow, but still, nice pushback here by the Spark. Adora came in with a big EMP and Leave is down. Elsa being desuited now and a defensive blizzard on the point. Doesn't really buy much time because Adora just shoots past its boundary. Godspeed is down, went for the barrage here, but the Spark, uh, they're in control now. Rhea's brought back to life and that's a lot of health to put back on the battlefield of such a crucial fight. Evil Tile can get to the point. He just tips it, Attack, sets yeah. up overtime. Amon switches to the Wrecking Ball, but he won't be there in time. And that'll bring our third round up here on Leisure. I would love to know if Chengdu had any idea that Adora had another EMP. And I say that because they get extremely aggressive behind Eamon with his Shatter, and they walk directly into it. Like, he shatters Rhea, and then he's going to go follow it up, and obviously the Hangzhou Spark know this, that the, the rest of the Chengdu Hunter is going to go follow up the Shatter. And all it is is Adora just comes in, just EMPs, and they just wipe the floor with them after that. It almost feels like they're trying to enable Leave in that fight as the McCree and as the main damage dealer when you're paired with a Mei, knowing that getting you know, the D.Va out of position can actually really force zoning with uh, with a Dead Eye if you get it. That's why, perhaps that's why he was the main target. Didn't quite play out the way they would have liked it to though. So we go to Control Center. So it'll be May Reaper here for Chung Du with that Baptiste. So you can play really brawly here if you're the Chung Du Hunter. It's Godspeed, they want to kind of create some space here for him to be able to just damage these players enough when they come in on the on, on the push that they're a little bit weak but the McCree's able to finish them off. I mean Lee just gets so easily into the back line him out with all these shields protecting him and of course a Batiste for the immortality field. He can really get up in the face of the spark here. Hunters 
They sort of trade kills, uh, Godspeed for Amon, and they're happy with that now. No shield tank for Chongdu. So Chongdu try and take the point. <laughs> Gooseway trying to fight Molly. <laughs> Amplification Matrix thrown out. That might punish yeah, Gooseway pretty badly. His shield just got broken very quickly. No one paying him any heat right now, though. Not only does he have time uh -oh. to build his shield bit up, but he's nano boosted and he's going to have an Earth Shatter here. We'll need to get past Amon's shield, but that wall is going to make this charge a bit easier. Still, though, he misses it. Jabated by Amon, who steps to the side, then gets his own counter charge. Shatter from oh. Gooseway hits nothing in particular now. The Gravitic Flux is going to make life a little bit hard for the spy. They get brought down with a crash. Rear and Gooseway very low. Elsa just trying to fend him off here. He gets IDK, and Jinmu's going to find himself too. I don't really know. It's incredible how they won that was fight. alive for that long, and then nobody actually had control of the point. This way, this way got Maywall's off and is able to dodge the charge. Uh, Amon, sorry, is able to dodge Gooseway's charge and then get a counter charge. Uh, I don't think Chongdu expected them to nano boost Gooseway and send him in there. They kind of weren't paying him any attention. His shield was completely broken, but they weren't competing, uh, committing to kill him. Anyway, they're trying to make their way back in now, but this Maywall is going to attempt to split them up a little bit. Adora did have the ice block. Double Blizzard. A lot of particle effects for you at home. Then I will probably just try and give some breathing room to the Spark and a free well, reload. They, uh, they push them back into Rhea's Gravitic Blocks, but it's a Maywall here from Jinmu that denies anything coming out of that. So, big Maywall from Jinmu pretty much denies two ultimates. Jinmu now going to sit on back. The Spark do eventually get what they wanted. That was to move on to the point. Spent a lot to get here, though. Flashbang used on Lee. He's able to survive. Immortality field placed down. Amon can now swing pretty freely. It's going to be equal. Sound barriers and coldest. Looks like he wasn't a recipient around the corner. Lee was pressuring him away from the rest of his team. And now the young superstars are ready for a blossom if required. Chengdu playing this composition, which, by the way, is something the Hangzhou have played a ton when they've been able to. They love coming in with this Reaper May. Chengdu are making themselves look very comfortable. I'm almost surprised that Hangzhou hasn't decided to match, considering they've had a lot of time to be able to try and break this. But they're going to stay with the McCree. They get a Maywall here, but Eamon, they want to make it out alive, so you get nothing out of that. Listen, McCree against double shield and small chokes, it isn't easy to get value here. Godspeed, decent amount of damage over the course of this map in general, but this round is struggle to find some of those shots. Where does Gooseway go? He notices that Chongdu was so split. He knows there's a run on his left hand side. Oh, you know what Lee was trying to do there. His intent was clearly signaled, but instead he'll settle for getting rid of Adora if he can, which he can't. Frozen up, and now the spark of a chance to break bad him. There's going to be a close one. Look like Coldus is sitting right on back, but the healing is there. Elsa's up. Jinmu wasn't expecting to get hit by the accretion, but he stepped too far forward through the barrier. And Adora could be a clutch blizzard, but Evil Tal is going to take him out as he comes around the corner. Now we have the reinforcements on the way through. Look at Gooseway. He's coming back to the point, and he has a shatter. Lays it down, but again finds nothing. And that could have been the backbreaker. The Spark really had to find something with their Reinhardt's return to the fray. And now with a blizzard over the point, they'll sit pretty and take map number one. One thing's for sure, it won't be a 3 over Hangzhou this time around. No, as Chengdu looked really good on that first map. It was, I know the, the second point they kind of fell behind and they played into the EMP uh, pretty poorly that Hangzhou had, but you know, when Chengdu was able to run the Mei with the Reaper, they, they looked really strong. And I think that Hangzhou definitely has to be worried in this series. You mentioned that Hangzhou wasn't switching their comp. They stayed with the, the, the McCree and the Mei for most of it. And you mentioned... That it was odd that they sort of weren't switching. Did that comp sort of lose them the round? Do you feel like they were just, you know, behind the eight ball fundamentally in terms of their picks? I mean, they got a, a few good actions with, like, their Maywall trying to make a play, but they were not able to burst anybody down. And I think that's when you need the Reaper and you need the speed boost to be able to push in and really burn one of those tanks down, right? We saw that one time from, I believe it was uh, you know, Avon's POV, that he got Maywalled, and then his teammates were able to just break him on out. And it was relatively easy. That there was no McCree damage there. If the Reaper goes in and really putting down the damage, you, you would have been able to pick up one of those kills. Well, we have uh, more wacky maps lined up for these two wacky teams. Coming up next, it is going to be Paris. It's 1-0 favoring the Hunters so far in this series. Looking to get their first win against the Spark this season. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor. And by Zip Chair Game. The official chair supplier of the Overwatch League.
Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, after a back and forth map one. It's the Hunters in the driver's seat for the time being. Let's see if it's going to be the Safari Tour that we yeah. hope for. Uh, Matt, normally uh, we have to yep. settle for Reinforce, but we actually finally managed to secure the services of Hugo yeah, for, he, uh, he, for our analysis. You know, he, he, yeah, but usually he's on, on the outside of the door, but he kept barking. He was like, oh, I'm going to go get my strawberry. But it turns out he just wanted to watch Chengdu Hangzhou from, from the, the pilot seat here where we could see the game in real time. But... Uh, no, I'm 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 excited for this series now, even more so that Chung Du's actually put up a fight. Yeah, uh, where I I was a little bit worried coming in, where I was like, ah, oh, maybe we're not going to see Chung Du really play at the highest level. They looked really lackluster yesterday against NYXL, but they really brought it there on map number one. I just think they were not ready for New York's style of play as well. Uh, you know, or, or, or uh, New York is just really strong. Like, well, their the, their composition that they picked. Directly counted Chengdu on Oasis. Like there's there's no arguing that, and Chengdu didn't really know what to do about it. Hangzhou though now seemed to be put in that similar position. We we saw them on Lijiang Tower, and they they stuck to compositions that didn't start them on the right foot, and things didn't get any better. So we're gonna head over to Paris now, Matt. And yeah, this is where Chengdu looked pretty average. They gave away early first bloods, especially with uh, you know their Lucio. Uh, Evil Tar was often pushed a little bit too far forward, and. You don't have many opportunities to make that same mistake on a map like this. You mess up once and you're going to get full capped. Yeah, I mean, th this map is really... Uh, it, it plays extremely odd, really much different than any other of the Overwatch maps, even the 2CP maps. So I think it, it really comes down to how you play on that first defense, right? Uh, you, you can pull out a lot of different, like, cheese compositions on that first point defense. Looks like Hangzhou starting on D. Uh, they'll just play the, the Mei with the McCree. And I, I wonder if Chengdu sees this and they decide to play something a little bit different. Interesting, we see the subs coming in for Chengdu yet again. So we saw these yesterday. Yeah, so they bring in Bacon Jack, they bring in Ating, and they bring in Legsa. Definitely feels like it's fairly pre-planned. Um, or you know, it may just be like a Map 2 thing or a, specifically a Paris thing. Uh, Legsa, of course seen a lot of him play the Batiste primarily. Bacon Jack's obviously another uh, hit scan option that the Hunters have up their sleeves here. Means that Jinmu can play the Sombra as well if he wants to. Or the May, as may be the case. Here come the Hunters straight out the gates and the Spark are going to be playing a McCree May setup. So not unlike what we saw on Li Zhang Tower. We do have mirror compositions. Let's see what we get. Is, uh, we'll see Chengdu. They will take their... Getting through the choke here is uh, the ni nice kind of fake to one oh, side, no. speed boost to the other. Ooh, they get walled off. That's a nice May wall there from Adora. I like the the screening wall from the Hunters there. It just means that they don't get too staggered. But Elsa is not really the rest of his team. I don't think he wants to be. He often plays as like a loose end here for Chongju. Uh, you know, and just trying to create different angles, right? Like also, a bit of yeah, get, side, get a big accretion like that behind a shield and you can start to cause problems for enemy backlines. You're self-sufficient, you have your own barrier. You also have your own way of generating a health value in terms of shields and kinetic grasp. The Hunters though, it's slow going. The Immortality Field is committed to the fight now by Hangzhou. Godspeed's trying to stay alive behind Gooseway's shield. He now feels more comfortable swinging, but that ends up getting Godspeed picked up. And somehow the Hunters can play in neutral game really slow. And it was a matter of Hangzhou just making a mistake, getting out of position, and now the cap has begun. And it's, th this is what, it, it's interesting, is that we saw this yesterday from Chengdu when they came in with this lineup. And New York was able to adapt, they knew kind of what Chengdu wanted to run pretty consistently. It means they don't want to move towards dive compositions with this lineup in. And Hangzhou is just committed to this uh, composition with the McCree, and it, it doesn't seem like they've been able to make it work. Is Seems like Chengdu's playing better in the matchup. Chengdu take that point with only three kills to their name. The, the Spark played yeah, back, hard. hope for reinforcements. They have a Lucio. I, it's not unreasonable, but they just never came. So they well, conceded very early. I mean, you also probably don't want to be in a losing fight. I mean, you're going to get some ult charge as well. But giving the attack, you know, a good chunk of ultimate percentage, yep. it always puts you on the back foot on stalling here, and you can lose this rather quickly. Stalling is a good way to invite a snowball against you. That's uh, dead right. So Rhea. Gravitic Flux. Looks like he threw it out there. Catches four of the Hunters. That's a lot of damage into the Blizzard as well. Okay, the combo is there this time though. for Hangzhou. This is fine if you're Chengdu. And this is like this is like almost best case scenario. They spent a shatter Chengdu, on this fight. Oh man. Chengdu, Chengdu used a Gravitic Flux 
and Hongjo invested in Ant Matrix, a Gravitic Flux, and a Blizzard there. And now Chengdu comes back with an opportunity where they'll have their own sound barrier, right? And they're going to have Shatter, Deadeye, Blizzard, and an Ant Matrix. Uh, for Chengdu there, I mean, you trade one ult for three. Uh, you don't have to be a, a higher than a Diamond to understand that. So that's pretty good. Yeah, only uh, high ELO players in this chat. Uh, 2,500 plus. Thank you. 18. <laughs> Has that Earth Shadow? It was only Elsa's Gravitic Flux that got used. So, I mean, I mean, the Hunters got the Snowball that they wanted. Now they actually have to get value out of these ultimates. If they do, then it should be a one fight. Bria, oh dear. Stunned up by Bake Jack on the side. And yep, Elsa crushes him again. The flanking Sigma, this time paired with the McCree. Similar concept to seeing the Bridge McCree flankers. It's a shield for your gunslinger. And an accretion to shut down 2v1s pretty comfortably. And now we'll see if Chengdu can make some progress towards taking the point as they get one uh, capture percentage. He got Bacon Jack he stuck here in the care. corner. It does not matter. So that'll be a sound barrier that comes through from Evil Tal. It actually didn't connect on the Bacon Jack, but they should be the point for Chengdu with three minutes and 24 in the time bank. And uh, I'm surprised. Uh, obviously, this is a. Uh, we saw some of the games earlier in the season, right, between these two teams. Sure. And I think one was a, a reverse sweep, I believe, from the Hangzhou Are Spark, where Chengdu got the first two maps. That's right. But I almost feel like Chengdu is a really bad matchup for Hangzhou. And I think Hangzhou, they play really strong in against teams like. Uh, when we had goats, right? It was almost like an orders of operations of what you needed to do at certain times, and it was so consistent in the decisions you needed to make constantly. Yes. Where I feel like Hangzhou struggles when it, it varies from fight to fight on what you have to do. So without a flow a chart, they look a little bit listless. Okay, here's a question they for you, Matt. Yeah. Do you think that comes from like overcoaching? I know this is like a really this is kind of obscure, right? But teams that can like instinctively play team fights know where they have so. to be, like. You know, because we've I seen plenty of teams that are too reliant on the plan, though. It, it more comes from playing one style and one composition for so long, and uh, they were able to play at an extremely high level. I mean, Hangzhou was one of the the best teams in the league last year, uh, you know, top four, top five at worst. And they didn't they, change their lineup. They didn't really make any new acquisitions didn't, whatsoever. Didn't, didn't make any changes. I guess Colvis. Uh, but that's it. Yeah, way, way different play styles this year, obviously, with the hero pools in than it was last year for most of the year. And, and you haven't really seen like a dive meta where they can really be ex explosive with Gushui. So I think they, it kind of gives them a lot of odd issues that they've never had. Maybe the Spark's depth increases when players like Otto start to show up, or, you know, Mika as well, the other support when they really get to, you know, I mean, if the individuals I don't really want to diverge. I still believe this is their best lineup, though. Oh. Like, even with some of those other players, I still believe this is their strongest lineup. I mean, this is, like, uh, we're, you know, obviously, Hangzhou is not great so far in the series, but we're talking about a team that was very strong last year. All right, Rhea, that was cute. Able to back away with Kinetic Grasp here. I like Chengdu there. Hackles are up. They went to push forward, but they give position away to Hangzhou. Who almost would have gotten to the point safely had Jinmu just not ripped IDK's head off with an icicle. Bacon Jack now, I mean, not really the angle you want to be playing from. Now on the point, he's able to work Adora down. And the Spark are responding too slowly to this. I mean, across the series, a little bit too slow to respond to players that are flanking or playing off angles. Now Bacon Jack's back to safety with the rest of his team. Chong do have a chance here to regroup and contest. Well, we'll see if it's enough though, right? They're I mean, not going to. They're, they're going to have that Gravitic Flux. It's, yeah, I mean, it's probably the wise move here for Chong Du to... I mean, they need to commit, right? They either need to what go in or they need this? to back out. As they're going to use an Ant Matrix, it'll be the Gravitic Flux from Rhea. As Chengdu just got on the point there and contested for a little bit. Now the second tick comes through. It was Evil Tal back, back to get there, I think, Matt. That's risky. I mean, Chengdu going there knowing they could get Flux and be prevented from touching the point. They really play with fire there. And now 18's on his own, essentially. Desperate attempts at healing from Lengsa from that side. Rooms won't keep him alive. And I understand the issue. Chengdu don't want to commit to fight on the point because that's the base. <sighs> So now you have quick respawns here for Chengdu. Everybody yeah. alive. So, but Hangzhou, they have a, they have a shatter and a blizzard and a and a dead eye here. And potentially try and make a play with. Oh, it's just interesting. Uh, we talked about flow charge and decision making and whether it's instinctive or not. And sometimes you know you don't take the good with the bad with a team that is so uh, you know by the seat of your pants as Chengdu is. Elsa, yeah, yeah. This should be a kill. On the should pick him up. <laughs> you Excuse are. Me? That is unreal. Unholy, the spark though. 
still looking okay. comfortable enough here to finish this one off. I mean, I thought they would have lost Gooseway. They didn't. He turned it around, and that's not supposed to happen. That's not he in the was, script. He was up in the air in a kinetic graph, uh, in a, in a gravitic flux. Talk about it in a second. But yeah, you, you get, get that highlight of service. <laughs> yeah. What in the world? How did they not deal with him? He actually comes down from the gravitic flux, charges in, and he hits Bank and Jack, just charges right through him, and then just turns and immediately shatters. Like, so I'll be honest, as a, as a caster, when I saw Gooseway charge off there, I stopped watching him, because I'm like, okay, well, he's low health, he's charged away, he's probably going to die, I'll see it on the kill feed to confirm, and I'll now look I at something else. I thought the was pretty much over, yeah. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> so good. Hey, this, uh, that is frankly preposterous, what we just saw from the Spark, how they managed to... Uh, Turn uh, down, a uh, turn around, I guess, a potential uh, one-man disadvantage, having almost lost Gooseway at the start of the fight. That is... Ready. You're kicking yourself with your Chongdu there. You had all of the resources available. You were an ultimate disadvantage, but you had just created an opportunity to isolate the most important player on the enemy team, and you still stuff it up. It's only, uh, only Chengdu could make things like that happen, right? Oh, I mean, they, lo they, look, they look great on their offense, right? They come in, and... They, then they get a, a, a good May wall. They get the opposing team's Ryan in a flux. They bring him up top. They drop him down. And then they let him charge into their back line, pin their McCree, and then turn around and shatter. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, what in the world? saddle We've the entered. heck up. We are in for a treat now. We've Paris goes into the Chengdu zone. <laughs> it is the Twilight zone. There's nothing they can't Chengdu. Let's see him out. With two minutes on the clock, they will be attacking and, and first. Is, this is exactly why when we do our power rankings uh, for Flat Chat, we, we rank every team and then we put Chengdu in their own little area called the Chengdu zone. Yeah. They're, they're unrankable. Yeah, they're sat they there look, with the University of Waterloo, right? Some, no, well, no, no. The, 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 the bad part with Chengdu is sometimes they look like world beaters. Like they could go out there and just like dominate anybody. And then sometimes they make these plays that you're just kind of like, can I see that again? Because I can't believe that actually just happened. Like, it's it's so baffling because he has so much individual talent. Well, have Pinky and the Brain decided to take over the world tonight? Or is this going to go down in the screaming heap? Oh, Elsa. Yeah, Elsa's, okay. Elsa's in a tough spot. Immortality Field thrown down. Okay. Elsa's kinetic cast keeps him alive a little bit longer. Somehow stays along as long as he does. But the spark this time, once they get their teeth in, Matt, they don't let go. Now they have that player advantage. Chengdu don't have a flanking off angle threat. And I criticized Hangzhou about this last time. They said they don't pay enough attention to these off angle players. This time they dove on Elsa. Yeah. That's the decisive yes. instead of winning a map here. Yeah. They're smart. As soon as they see Elsa split off, they see that the other members of the Chengdu Hunters are, are really not in a position to close the gap. And when I say close the gap, they're like at the bottom of the staircase and they can't actually speed boost all the way to the point where they can uh, get to Elsa to help him. They decide to just speed boost into him to take him out. So really nice play there from Hangzhou. 33 seconds left, Matt. Jinmu, careful. They lost him there. There'll be no mercy to bring him back and none offered by the Spark either. All right, Gravitic Flux here. What's the follow-up going to be? Lengsa immediately throws down an immortality field. Taken out and Rhea. I mean, everyone's corralled into that sort of square area and those hyperspheres be bouncing. Baker Jack's in trouble. That shield's in his face and he knows he has no impasse here with Rhea. And now it'll be uh, the classic evil tile stall technique. He touches by the a bunch of players. Look at this guy. He's out of play. Frogger, dude. No. He never touched the point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw him, and I, I think he thought that when he went on the inside track that he may have clipped the point, but he just, he just sped boost right on past uh, it, so. He's trying to, I tell you what he's trying to do, he's trying to wall ride to the next map, Matt. He's, he's done. Yeah. Get him out of here. Three minutes on the clock uh, is what the spike will have to work but with. I, I actually think that he, uh, what he probably thought was that when he sped boost around the corner, and hit that one wall and then went towards the Mega, that before he hooked in to get the Mega, he had touched the point for a second, which would have triggered OT, and then he would have had enough time to make the loop around the building. But he just, he misses it by about four feet. And just... It's tragic. It is, it does hurt to see. It would have been, dude, it would have been a sick play. Mind you, he is surrounded by five players. And magically, with a sound barrier, he's just able to wiggle his way out and just kind of make this miraculous move towards the point. It's even amazing that he made it out there. Uh, he just whiffs and misses the point. 
Oh, I, I bet you guys are so glad those in the uh, on the West Coast you tuned in at 2 a.m. to listen to me laugh like a hyena at this absolute pandemonium. But this is what you get with these two teams. The Spark only need one tick on point A, and they've got three minutes to do it. Uh, in theory, very doable. In theory, you'd almost say winnable, but I mean, with the Hunters, you never know what you're going to get. Like a box of chocolates, <laughs> yeah, but all of them are yeah. spicier than Mapo Tofu. Right? Well, that's the, that's the craziest part about Chengdu, is that they, they make all these wacky plays, and then they can come out here and just hold them. Like, it, it is not out of uh, the realm of possibility. It's 2 minutes and 40 seconds on Paris, not a lot of time. Oh, the Spike just need to take this slow and steady. Do they get rear into a, an off-angle position? They're trying to. Uh, kinetic Grasp has to be used here. Well, can't grasp uh, a boulder. Rhea does have the off-angle spot. So, okay, the Hunters now go for the bulk of the Spark. They try and dive down on the five players, and Rhea just sort of floats back towards them now. Some neutral trading between 18 and Gushue. Bacon Jack a little bit far forward of the shield, and that shield is a little bit low, yeah, so they, they gotta they gotta make a, a play here on Chengdu. I mean, you have no shield, yeah, they you can't just over. kinda stand there and jump around, yeah. They were just waiting for that to happen. They're like Clint Eastwood, sitting out on his, uh, on his porch in old age, just waiting for time to pass. It's not what you want to see. On to the point now, Matt. Can, they, they can just wait out the M Matrix. They do. Now it's going to be Elsa getting close to his Gravitic Flux. It's the only chance they have to hold this. All right. Here comes the Wrecking Ball. Aiting, trying his best aim on. Impression. Hasn't squeezed enough oranges over people's heads, though, I guess. It's going to be one apiece now as Hangzhou take Paris away in... It was a, it was a, it was a very enjoyable map. Uh, if you are looking through this at the lens of looking for, uh, you know, nuances, greatness, maybe a little bit harder to find those there. Some definitely ah. some questionable decisions. But I have to say, Gushui's turnaround to survive that was that's crazy, man. Uh, Hangzhou looked much better on that map, but I'm not exactly sure it was them that looked much better or just Chengdu getting a little wacky with everything. Sure. Uh, just a, a little a little bit of odd place out of Chengdu at times where the map is still close, mind you. Like, it, it's all over the place. There's some there are some funny moments during the, that one from both teams, and Hangzhou's able to pull it out, but that map is still very close uh, where I still would not feel great if I'm a Spark fan going into halftime. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't think you want any sort of chaotic game against the Hunters no matter what team you are. You want to nope. keep it one-sided if you can. We are... Going to head to a break now for a little bit. When we come back, it'll be myself and Matthew taking a quick aside, breaking down what we've seen in this series so far. Stick around. This is Hunters versus Spark. You never want to miss these. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is your Game Break presented by Cheez-It Grooves. We are halfway through what may end up being quite a long series uh, between the Hangzhou Spark uh, and the Chengdu Hunters. Well. It's happened before this season already, Matt. Of course, a reverse sweep that happened well, week eight, I want to say. Yeah, going back a fair yep. bit. But we are seeing uh, a couple of different faces of Chengdu so far. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we have the lineup where they have uh, you know, Eamon, uh, Molly, and uh, Jinmu in, which is uh, a little bit more aggro, really fast. You can play a lot of different things with Jinmu, and a Eamon can play the ball. He can play Reinhardt as well, uh, at Orisa's too, but obviously not this week. A and the Molly routine play a, a good Zen Baptiste, so it feels like they're a little bit more flexible with that lineup in. And when they want to play something a little bit more standard, a little bit more slow, that's when you see them make the switches to A Ting Lengsa and Bacon Jack. All right, so now for our crunch time presented by Cheesy Grooves, I'm putting Matt on the spot. What composition do you think is, is going to lend itself to more success now over the next couple maps in this series? That's Holly uh, Route 66 I... in Hollywood. I would probably... Well, Route 66, it's kind of hard, because what do you do with it, Eamon? Uh, he can't really play... Like, this would be a map that you could play him, because he could play Arisa Ball, but is not in. So do you trust his Reinhardt? And then also, what do you want to do in terms of uh, damage dealers? Like, this is one that kind of plays into Jinmu's wheelhouse, right? You can play some Genji uh, Verticality. You can play some Fara here. Uh May, obviously, very strong in all the maps. So uh, I think you have more looks with Jinmu in the lineup. I'm surprised we haven't seen anything from them, at least over the last two days, with Jinmu and Aiting in the lineup, which could give you that Reinhardt in that May presence. I'm so, uh, some pretty in insane fighting. Uh, the clip see now is Rhea just sort of throwing out a Gravitic Flux there, and he caught a lot of players with it, but uh, that was a lot of ultimates being forced out of the spot. That was what the Hunters actually wanted to achieve there. You hit four players with it, but that was a fight that... Chongdu weren't actually really trying to win, Matt. No, yeah. I mean, they're, they they just kind of throw them up in the air. I mean, they get them weak, and they're able to follow it up. And I believe this is where uh, Hangzhou is able to actually complete their push. Uh, so, uh, actually, uh, that's where they held them on defense, and then the ne they lose the next fight. Uh, when they when they actually got their push, it's when uh, Gushui was really low and pinned Bacon Jack and did the kind of turnaround shatter. But... Uh, that was the one defensive hold there from Hangzhou on point B, which is good enough to get them a map win. So coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, Route 66 uh, will be a chance for us to see a tie broken between these two now. Who gets out in front? Either way, we're getting a four-map series here, so plenty of robust Overwatch action to whet your appetite for the games to come. We'll see you after the break for map number three. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheez-It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch, it's a mind crunch.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back to the Overwatch League, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, joining us for our halftime. We got a chance to uh, just wind down and chat a little bit about this match because there, there's a lot to point out on both sides. A lot of micro things and even some some macro things, some stuff on the larger scale. As we head into Route 66, yeah. we should expect to see some of those trends uh, start to manifest even more, Matt. And uh, your answer about the composition or the the team lineup that we should expect to see has been answered as well. Yeah, I mean they're gonna they're gonna stay with uh, Jinmu and A Ting in the lineup, Lengsa as well. I was uh, wondering maybe we see Leave come back in. Uh, that's somebody I didn't mention at halftime, but uh, we we do see uh, Bacon Jack stay in yet again. So that tells you they want to probably commit to some hit scan with uh, McCree. Uh, can play some Sombra as well, but I think uh, Leave it just gives you a little bit of a different look. You're able to play a little bit more. Uh, options in terms of what you play as the damage dealers. Matt, both these teams are loving it right now. They're in the, they're in the lobby. They're, they're sort of typing in chat and they just keep saying, we're ready, fun. we're ready to yeah. play. And they're, they're bantering in perfect English. So I'm very impressed. Both of these teams are, uh, yeah, just uh, communicating with each other uh, across the bow and they're clearly enjoying themselves. And why not? It is, uh, it's been a bit of a, a brawl between these two and that's how they like to play. Interesting. They go Widow on the uh, no, offense here. And that's on defense. Uh, they're going to yep. have Widow on D as well. So some Widowmaker play here coming out. It's really Widowmaker when we see it in NA. It hasn't been too frequent at all. It's teams have actually started to go more towards like Ash, right? Uh, where yes. Widow, they, Widow Weeder haven't seen as much. We saw a bunch from the Valiant uh, in this position, uh, sort of defending first point, playing the bridge. Uh, gives you a fair bit of safety as well. And also if they try and push you, uh, you know, through the train card on the top right side, you can get a nice dynamite hit against them. Bacon Jack plays low ground early here, so maybe doesn't fancy taking the peek against God's B, who is also peeking quite safely. Might switch up here. He does. Goes to McCree. Yeah, as, uh, as it will be, Chung Du on defense. Uh, so so we'll get that flipped for you guys in terms of the overlay. So Hangzhou's on offense. Uh, Chung Du is on D here. Uh, so we'll see. Chung Du, they'll have that Widowmaker in play, like we mentioned. Hangzhou plays the Widow at the beginning, but now they play McCree. Because in the the position that they're in, they just have to get the cart moving. Uh, there's not really a, an opportunity to try and take this Widow 1v1. You may as well just try and take the fight on the cart. You can use that McCree in that medium range to get a pick off until you're in a good spot. And the Lengsa and Azing have actually rotated into the train cart because Lengsa got chunked early and didn't want to use his self-heal. Wanted to save it for a more opportune moment. It's a trade though. Azing is down. And Jinmu's in a compromising position. I, I don't even know how Gooshway ended up on the freaking moon there. Someone call the fire department and get this guy down. What? Compromising <laughs> position. That was, uh, that was a good way to explain it. <laughs> What's he doing up there, mate? Does he have no, exo no. boots? <laughs> oh, you love to see it. Gooshway uh, goes where no Ryan uh, would otherwise go. And does it with a smile on his face. So uh, Hangzhou gets the car moving here. So uh, Chung do they have to switch off the Widow right away. So that's exactly what I was talking about, where you didn't need to commit to the Widow if you're Hong Joe, because if you take that fight on the cart, get it moving, they have to switch off of it regardless. Elsa to the high ground. Oh, wow, Adora. Okay, straight into Ice Block. Wanting to cool off uh, without too much convincing. Just to remind you guys, Chung you are defending. So uh, our overlay is flipped incorrectly right now. Just bear that in mind. Hangzhou are uh, trying to move this payload forward, but it's unlikely they're going to make too much more progress now that Bacon Jack has thinned their ranks and he's got a great little uh, vantage point to do it. Godspeed's got to be a flash. Get rid of Jimmy with Rick and Ice Block cleverly done now. It's going to be a Gravitic Flux. So look how low Bebe is, and Elsa made a beeline for him. Knew that he could get rid of him without the Batiste. The healing would be sorely limited, and so the Hunters stabilize here on defense. Yeah, and Adora ends up using a Blizzard there towards the end, so... Pretty rough there for the Hangzhou Spark as we get the, uh, the overlay in the right spot as that uh, Godsby ended up making his way up to the high ground there. Went with the the old tried and trusted So Min Su, the flashbang oh. failed hammer. It's a uh, nice, nice knockoff there oh. from Eel Tali. He got really uh, fortunate though. He was there for a little I don't, bit too long. I don't think it was a complete knockoff though. It almost went really wrong. If he had tried to boot with Gooseway's shield, it wouldn't have knocked anyone off. Uh, yeah. And actually would have caused him to get instantly flashed and killed. So we got a little lucky there, I want to say. Here's Gravitic Flux, catches three, dead eye combos into it, and Evil Tile is down. Got to be trying to play a safe position here. They're wrapping around to try and... Oh, what, what a shatter! 18 
huge shout out, but the follow up wasn't there, and Gooseway is just laying waste to the hunters. But, uh, I, what I don't really, what I don't like about how the hunters play that there, is they have big earls, they have it under control. The and chill, they they're eating half price burgers, you they, know, they membership fee. They don't even try and like fight for it. Like Hangzhou has to wrap all the way around that right side to go get the high ground, and, and Chengdu lets them. They, they don't even like try and take the fight to them, right? Deny them access to the high ground, and then even just back up. They just they just jump down and give them the high ground. Such an odd decision there, Chengdu. Bizarre. That whole passage of play was. Free is able to take a step back here, step aside, get a little bit of extra shield. And the Spark just have the one on the card right now, so they can sort of maintain this high ground. Evil Tar would love to uh, translocate the Spark from high to low. That May Wall means he'll have no protection if something goes wrong. Jinmu would like to ideally drop down and very quickly throw a Blizzard as well. Uh, and Matrix is going to make it hard for him to peek from the stairs. Bacon Jack and Elsa got stunned there. Godsby is down though. We're able to find the McCree. From the backside, this is El Elsa now. A lot of flanking from both of these teams. Rhea, Kinetic Grass, we're going to eat a hell of a lot of damage to the sound barrier now. It's committed by IDK. Here's the Blizzard. Yeah, is this Blizzard is going to be good. They catch Gucci. He's actually trying to charge out of it. That'll be anything. Pinning him against the wall so you get rid of the main tank. Because now Chengdu may be able to stabilize here on D. IDK to the cart. Going to get a bit of extra progress. You should see how low Elsa was. And Lexa has to throw down an immortality field. That's removed now. Hey, sound barrier. On top of the gas station. Oh, I IDK! Him into the he, what a play! He moves Elsa sort of diagonally up and makes sure that he gets a couple of extra ticks to freeze him. That's fantastic! I Otherwise, mean, I don't exactly avoid yeah. getting frozen, most of them. I mean, I don't love the, the, the blizzard on top of the gas station, but uh, it's a tremendous poop there from IDK. Tanaka, Elsa, I believe, right back into it. Now you extend that fight long enough for Hangzhou when you have players just kind of touching the car, moving it inch by inch, is that's going to get them that second checkpoint. So now it gets a little harder for Hangzhou to sort of follow their MO on attack so far this round, which has been to wrap around the backside and leave your Ryan as sort of a pivot in front. A little bit harder to get the flank here, a little bit harder to control high ground. Neither team are actually playing Diva right now. So it's hard to unseat Chongyu from where they are unless it's a boot from IDK again. And I'm also surprised that Hangzhou, like, Elsa's been on the flank so much this game that when they see him on the flank, they they just don't, like, death ball through the other team, right? Like, hey, they don't have their Sigma, you don't have the appreciation of the grass, the, the extra shield with the Reinhardt. Let's just barrel down their Reinhardt. I like apologize a, to those who suffer from motion sickness, by the way. There's uh, see that, that often. a lot of moving on this high ground. Nicely placed Gravitic Flux. The follow-up Rhea can't really contribute to right now. He's too busy dealing with Elsa, but Adora was also there. But, uh, you, you have this, you have the exact action here from Hangzhou every fight. Elsa plays off on his own on an island, whether it be, uh, you know, like flanking, far left, trying to get poke, far right, trying to get poke. And you can do exactly what you just did every single fight. You can, you can get a wall and split him off. You can just speed boost it and the Sigma just sat off in no man's land. You, you can get this action every time if you're Hangzhou. It's just, uh, it's kind of interesting. They're only finding it out now. Bacon Jack, was he stunned? He stood still and took two icicles there across the map from Adora, who now throws a blizzard down on a point. Elsa, that no amount of immortality field is going to save him there. Ivatal is down. He got caught by the dead eye. Godsby trying to work through the payload here, hoping they try and overcommit on Gushui. He's going to be able to get a couple kills if they do. And now it's clean up. Chongdu have very little left to work with. An IDK is a wishful sound barrier, not exactly required at this present juncture. But the card gets across the line regardless. One minute Pretty 13 in the bank. Uh, this is a tough map to finish. So to finish it with a minute 13, pretty good there for Hangzhou. It seems like they've uh, come alive uh, in this series. It's the, the first map was not pretty, as Chengdu's able to take it, uh, although it does go down to the wire. And it was decided so, on comps as well, and first fight yeah. wins. Yeah, as, uh, now it seems like Hangzhou is figuring this out. They've they've realized that Chengdu's kind of playing uh, uh, very separate from each other, and Hangzhou can play this almost exactly like how you played GOATS, as they can pick a target, speed boost at him, use the May wall, and knock him down. I mean, Riga is getting a lot of value. You mentioned that the Sparks game plan is pretty straightforward. We actually talked about that right at the start of the game where you said that when that plan falls apart, so did they, but that hasn't happened. Rhea, seven final blows here. He's topping his team in damage right now, playing those off angles as Sigma. Really, uh, you know, causing a lot of problems because he is so self-sufficient, so much protection and peel 
that you cannot commit a single player to deal with him. Much like D.Va, like these, these off tanks are incredibly good duelists for that reason. The Hunters have to all dive on Rhea or just try and get rid of the rest of the spark in a 6v5. Yeah, and that's why it's so surprising uh, to see how much we're just going to observe how the spark have gotten off to a slow start this season. Uh, they did get off to a slow start last season, then picked it up. But still, they have the talent to really make it dent in this league. I think the toughest part for them is that they're in the Asian division, right, where there's so many good teams, where you're not able to beat up on some of the teams that you could in the Atlantic, right? So I think that could end up being something that really hurts the spark in the long run. Bacon Jack wanted to find Bebe, but he saw some hypersphere's coming from above. Godsby's had an excellent uh, map so far, already 12 final blows to his name. He's had a phenomenal season this far. Yeah, there's been a lot of games where he's bailed him out. And he was very consistent, but he played a bunch of Zarya last year, so now we actually get to see the Godsby that was kind of promised to us. Gushue, uh, classically, around this part of the map, always tends to amass kills in huge numbers. The Spark uh, have just forced the Hunters back now, when this could be the start of something that the Hunters, frankly, don't want any part of, man. Yeah, as now we see, like, I thought the Hunters potentially played Jinmu here, and, uh, and you potentially I thought they were going to have leave in the lineup to try and do something a little bit different, something that almost worked like back in control. But they're going to go with the mirror yet again, so we'll see if they're able to get any type of progress on the part. It looks like they're going to wrap around for the high ground, but you have the end here so dropped by oh Bebe, so my you're going to be able to have a few kills come down here for the Spark. What a great little snipe with the accretion from Maria. That sets up the kill for Godspy. Bacon Jack was just walking out in the open and got knocked on his hind quarters. And now Gooseway, I mean, okay, so I don't get full, uh, you know, nano boost value. If they try and push me, I'm going to shatter them here, right in front of their spawn. They're going to make them very sad. Yeah, I mean, 18 just came around the corner and saw Gushue with a full shield standing in front of him, which dropped his shatter. So that's, maybe he thought he was going to get it around him, but... It's like Tourism Iceland ad. We bring the blizzard to you. Dump right out in front of their, their spawn, and the hunters just don't really have any room to sort of rotate, even try and play an off-angle with Elster if they wanted to. This is where it gets dangerous for the hunters, so... If you use Gravitic Flux and Deadeye here, and the spark just hold on to ultimates. You are in a top spot. And this will be an ambush. You can kite this. This will be reusing. Oh He's man! Flux, Bacon Jack gets stunned out of his dead eye as everybody's tossing everything into this fight. Yeah, and why not? At this point, Hangzhou have forced uh, Chongdu to part with a lot of their jealously guarded ultimates, man. They get him out of them. They say, that's fine. We get another fight here. We get another fight where we, you know, come in Hello. with, you know, decent ultimates. They're going to have a sound barrier to match Chongdu's here. So Hello. on okay. paper. It's good for it's Hangzhou. A, it's a really good scenario for Hangzhou. You have both support ultimates coming in here. You can put God's B up on the high ground with the Ant Matrix. You have your sound barrier to deal with this blizzard, and then you also have Gushui the Shatter. So you have a lot of ultimates to get another hole here. Another hole here puts the clock down to probably like 40 seconds at best. Is it? it seems oh, like no. oh, that you don't need, you don't need to use these ultimates, man. I mean, that is brutal there. Jinmu Chung playing Dude. close, Matt, isn't a problem. Unless Adora throws a wall off and Wait, prevents why, the Hunters why, from following up. Why are you countering with Sound Barrier here if you're Chengdu? You're down, you're down your main with Blizzard and you just lost your Reinhardt. And they're like, they're Thirdly, so far they're away. they're not in position, exactly. They're not in position to get value. Maybe they were worried they're about sound, getting staggered. They, they, they're Sound Barrier and ran. I mean, they, uh, oh, that's really hard there from Chengdu. Oh, Elsa. Yeah, stunned up there. Gushui will be frozen. The Blizzard thrown out. Adora knows he can hang around a little inside the blizzard. He's dressed in furs, in fairness, used to uh, Antarctica's cold tem temperatures. But that from the Hunters was frankly bizarre. They, they get completely outplayed. They lose their May, uh, play too far forward, walled off, and then they try and commit with five. Now they've got no choice, but they'd love to have had the sound barrier right about no, now. No, no good there from the Hunters. Is that now you're going to walk into a Gravitic Flux dead eye here, and you have nothing. Be nice to have Sound Barrier now. Uh, you could use it to combat that Gravitic Flux. Well, this is one side of the corner of the Hunters that you have to live with if you're a fan or if you're a purveyor of their wares on the battlefield. Rhea, okay, good coverage. He's going to quickly try and duck out of sight from the dead eye, but Bacon Jack never had a chance to pull the trigger. Flash Evil Tile, he's down as well. Godspeed's getting thrown around here but he's still finding these shots. Accretion comes in from across the map there. I'm surprised it didn't get telegraphed through. But Gushui catches 18 on the charge in, and we're in overtime, and I'll be honest with you, the Hunters don't have much to work with. The prognosis is dire. Jinmu now standing on the point on his own. 
Not much to be done. Okay, I like a bit of the Doomfist here from Bacon Jack. Almost gets a clean kill on Adora by the looks of things. But Adora's able to find some space, stay alive. And that is the spark. Go to match point now with a win here on Route 66. Yeah, Chung, dude, just had some <laughs> poor ultimate usage. I mean, that is just... There's no way about it, is there? But this is, is this is no. it. No. This is the good, the good. This is the bad you take with the good. And you're in a position there where you're going to be able to get the cart to that first capture point, potentially, if you just save some of these ultimates. And maybe, uh, you know, you have to look back at the timing, maybe with the replay, like uh, Evil Tell Dottie would be able to save a thing with the sound barrier. But he's <laughs> so far away, and it's so late that you're almost like there's no way that that's how that was plan to go down. Maybe uh, in Evil Tile's mind, he he beats and then he speeds his team forward or, and they, or, they to, and they, they they just charge at them to the, the music thought, of the March of the Valkyries and they have a glorious yeah, maybe victory. Maybe the A-Ting was going to drop and they could speed boost the team in and sound barrier behind him, but it doesn't even make sense because they speed boost and then they just kind of back out with the barrier, so it's quite odd. Maybe they thought Hongzhou was going to commit more. Uh, it, it's just a really odd play. Well, really Matt, odd. Never a dull moment in a matchup between teams nope. like this. Uh, but the Hunters are still going to be looking for a little bit more of that sheen. Let's see if they can uh, polish things up in the break. We come back. They've got one chance to stay in the series. that are take it to a map five. We'll be back with map four right around the corner. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Helping you stay connected to what matters most. Learn about T-Mobile's COVID-19 response on T-Mobile.com. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Great to have you with us for this first match of the night or the day, wherever you are in the world. Hangzhou Spark are one map away from taking victory, and they'll be their third victory uh, against the, the Chengdu Hunters this season. Matthew, we have seen a lot of back-and-forth stuff, but you mentioned specifically the Spark looked like they came alive in that uh, round on Route 66. They did, but the Hunters also just made some plays that were just not okay. It's, uh if you see the, the spots where the hunters look really strong and then you also see the moments where it's either panic starts to set in or they just make these uh, plays that don't, don't really make much sense and that they can eliminate those. This would be a team with a much better record than 3-6 and because uh, they do have the... Right, Jinmu is really strong in terms of mechanical skills. Same with... Uh, uh, you know, their supports and the tanks. It's just uh, some of the decision-making and the teamwork just not there. Well, our fourth map of the series is going to be Hollywood here. And uh, the Spark are looking to make it four and five for the season. And 
to sort of uh, piggyback off what you mentioned about Chengdu, Matt, they don't really have too many matches to just give away at this point. If they really want to come out of the, no. this divisional play with a, a good record, they have to shore up some of these weaknesses real quick. The, the, this division is so strong. Like, you have like, Hangzhou, Guangzhou, New York, Vancouver, Seoul, Shanghai, London. Like, I mean... The, the quality of teams in this division is mental. Uh, and to think about it as potentially like you're looking at like a Chengdu and uh, maybe like a Guangzhou was like, you know, your, your weakest teams, they'd be decent in the Atlantic. Like they beat a bunch of teams in the Atlantic. Uh, where they are, any time of opportunity where they, they can get close to a win, they have to secure it. And this is a series where it definitely feels like they're close. Well, <laughs> this map, uh, Hollywood, not ideal for the Hunters so far. There are uh, currently a 33% win rate on it. Hybrid maps generally are some of their weaker ones. And the bad news for them is that... to me, though. That's the important thing, because they couldn't leave it. His return on the McCree. Now, Spark, uh, as I was saying, uh, this is their best map type right now, uh, across the entire season by a good margin. So they feel comfortable. Now, Hollywood itself has only been their second outing on this map. So far, walls thrown up for both teams here. Lengsa gonna have to use his exo boost to get above that, but he was too slow to save 18. Oh, the, the wall there from Jinbu is a, it, it's like a, a, an odd angle, and it leaves an area where they can just walk through the back, and they come up and take the fight. They're probably playing around the idea that they're gonna get a main wall on the show, and, and the main wall just allows them to walk right in. Well, what are you gonna do then when your Batiste gets walled off from your Reinhardt? I mean, and the enemy team's running at you at a rate of knots. There was no way to keep him alive. That there was really elementary. A study no in cutting off sight lines and isolating individuals. There's no reason they have to uh, approach that. I mean, look, Kung Tu's playing a Lucio. Why do they have to get close to the choke and then get a wall to get the pick off? Well, they lose 18 here, so now they have to back up. They, they can play around the wall, and then if they get one, then they can speed boost in. This Z like they, comp is really interesting, though, man. They put them in a position where it's a chunk do themselves, or they couldn't really get out of it in any way. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the Z are going to play a little bit slower, right? But the, it's. it's it adds a lot of extra damage. You are hard to shift. This comp, we were, we were seeing this comp with like Orisa Sigma. Uh, you know, like a really yeah. static sort of composition here. Oh, that's wrong. That's not okay. Okay! Oh, no! That's... What? Okay, Godsby's able to finally finish on 18 gear as he, his shield was not allowed to be kept up. Gushue made sure of that. And now he rules the skies. Godby gets another shot on Lee, playing from that high ground. and. Oh my, this is starting to get a little bit out of hand. I know it's late night here and this kind of content is more acceptable at these hours, but wow. Yeah, it's not it's not going good for the Chengdu Hunters right now. As uh, I think that would be putting it nicely is you know, that fight does not go their way. It's the, the right idea to try and get a high ground, but yeah, Matrix plus the dead hand is usually the pit. As look, that's a beautiful main wall. Elsa, they know he always comes to the flank. Nobody can even get to the card here to touch. It's 16 to zero in kills right now. Chung, Chengdu have done nothing on this map, and it is starting to run through their hands like sand. The spark here just look very, very good. And, and look, it's so much, it's so punishing now when you're up against the Zen Batiks because if anyone gets caught out of shield, they get discorded, they get blown up instantly. But Chung Du has to close the gap and run at Hangzhou. And Hangzhou is perfectly fine to take those fights because they have the extra damage with the Discord and the Baptiste and the Immortality Guild. So you're okay with the fights being in the close brawly angle was it also drops down to the left here so the cart may make it around the corner which is a weird position to fight from Maria goes for the flux he's not interested in following it up on a mutual flash leave actually opts out of the duel rolls down to the hole the low ground godspeed dies over the top he did have a dead eye but his main tank is currently held aloft so he didn't really want to mess with that too much okay goose way and AT both traded out here this is where the mccrees really start to have an impact in the fight and having Squad that zen side. is big there's only one shield right now and that's elsa's when was the last time you saw oh. this positioning on Hollywood offense where the teams have swapped sides? This will be a sound barrier from Chung Du, which it, it didn't really need it. I mean, not a, lot, not a lot of people alive. And as soon as that sound barrier wears off, usually he's able to get a double oh my kill, God. a fire strike, they wrap back around, and Hangzhou wins that. They don't even need the bullets to set out. 
and they, they the just hold it. Shadow. I mean, Gooseway can just shadow them as they try and push out here. Elsa's going to have to throw down a, yeah, an early speculative shield to make sure he's not knocked on his hindy. Evil Tile. I mean, what do you do from this position? IDK is a nice little vantage point now, and yeah, it had to be the shadow. Lengsa had no idea what hit him. Three minutes and 48 seconds on the clock, and that was an absolute brutalization. Yeah, that was that was quite quite ugly there. So Hangzhou's really able to take it to him, but a, a lot of a, a lot of good capitalizations by Hangzhou on mistakes of Chengdu. They're able to realize that hey, Chengdu's just going to walk us down and charge us with this Lucio. So let's just play a control composition where. All right, they're going to barrel into us. Well, okay, we'll play Zen, we'll play Baptiste, and we'll just take the fight in the brawl. And they do that. And Chengdu just walks into it time after time. Right. One reason why Chengdu also, you see them getting behind the Spark all the time is because they're actually trying to shut down Rhea, and they have a speed boost. So they are quite quickly trying to circle around. The Spark are responding to that by pulling Rhea around to the I rest of Hunter. Can't. I actually cannot think of another time I have casted this map, or even played it, where the the team is pushing the cart on the scene checkpoint from the defender's side. Yes. I think about it, like how really odd it is strange. on a map like but, on a map like Hollywood. How does that? Well, it, it is strange. Okay, really. But you hard. have high ground access as defenders, and if you push off that high ground, you're behind them. Like if you choose to push off that high ground. And the thing is, yeah, is that the, the hunters never, are trying to get a fight using the Lucio, so they probably will push down. Usually, you never usually go that angle, though, because you always want the defender spawn to your backside, right? To obviously just keep flooding out. You would never take the angle that leaves you potentially split. Yeah, it leaves you split then, for more than one team fight. And especially because when they're playing this control comp, if you split, you don't want to charge it down, a player down. But then also, if one of your players spawns on the other side, you don't want him to get isolated and picked off. So that's really odd positioning from really both teams there. Okay, Adora throws up a wall to protect himself. I thought he would have just put it uh, 90 degrees sort of rotated so he'd catch someone out as they push through the corner. That's interesting. Uh, cause, cause, yeah, because what, what they probably would have tried to do is speed boost through the back and maybe go to cafe. So it blocks that angle, okay. and if they burn that speed boost there, they're stuck in no man's land in the middle. Honestly, like the, the the efforts that both of these teams are going to try and outmaneuver each other is is what is a making these fights take a little bit longer sometimes, but b making this extremely interesting. And there it is again, a loose end is left, but I don't think it was intentional but, but this, this time. But, but this happens every time with it, it's it's most of the time it's Elsa playing off to the side, kind of doing his own thing. This time though, it's leave. And and look, Jin just sit up here with a wall. Why would Hangzhou go in there? There's no need to go in there. They're up a player. They know the one player is going to be stuck in the choke. Why would they go and play for the high ground? There's no reason to. At this point, Hangzhou can just kind of hang out here. By the okay, eight against the drop down now. So they create an off angle by leaving someone on the high ground. That's to Elsa, of course. That wall means that Leaf cannot capitalize really on the amplification matrix. He's able to knock out a center segment of the main wall, but it doesn't really get anything with that. That blizzard is devastating. Leaves in deep trouble. Adora has time to stop Smell the Roses and get rid of the immortality field before finding the kill on Leave. And Evil Tar was right behind him. And the Spark are leagues ahead of the Hunters right now in, in just the, in the, their approach to this map. Absolutely. And I, what, I, what I worry about for Chengdu here on this offense is coming up with the, all of these ultimates. That you start blowing through these, we've seen Hong Zhou to have a really nice read on what they need to invest and what they need to save coming in a lot of these fights. Uh, as it could give the Spark a huge, uh, even bigger advantage on defense, depending on how this next fight goes in terms of ultimate usage from Chengdu. So what does Chengdu do? Do they try and take the high ground again and, and leave El Elsa up there? Do they try and push through main and potentially get walled off? Okay, high ground it is. Yeah, I think you got to force high ground here. And I would consider using whether it be like a Blizzard or Gravitic Flux to try and get some ultimate out of the spark. That's a Gravitic Flux you thought about. A react. Oh, okay. Kinetic Grass can protect it for the dead eye for a time. They make it around the wall too, so they can't even get like a lot of follow -up. So here's the crack back now. Maria goes for a flux of his own. That looks pretty good. It had to be a sound barrier for Chongdu. IDK gets his off at the same time. Immortality Field of Lengsa is taken down, and Godspeed gets rid of Lengsa. That's not good for the Hunters now. They use uh, they use so much in that fight. They use Blizzard. They use Sound Barrier. They use it all. Yeah, they burn through everything. I mean, that's kind of what you you thought. And now when we're back at this even fight, Hongzhou's been dominating these. So 
really your best chance to, for Chengdu is to force an ultimate advantage, but they, they blew that opportunity. So, so here's where, uh, like, they, they kind of lose it, is when they use the Gravitic Flux, Hangzhou can just walk around the corner, and they don't need to invest sound barrier. They just put a immortality field down there. They put an animator, so you can't just push into it. Is now, see, this is what the, the May Wall is originally there for. You see how they use a speed boost to try and get around the corner with that May Wall coming in from Adora. It puts them in a horrible spot, right? They've already used speed boost, and look at this positioning. It's horrible. Oh, it's awful. Hunters approach this fight, Matt, with nothing but raw mechanics, skill, and 100% concentrated power of will, and it, they just walk straight into a May Wall, and then opt to step inside a closet. And instead of going to Nani, they go back to Spore and they just group up and the Spark have such strong positioning. Yeah, and that's why you see that May walk out of the door. It denies them getting into the cafe area. It'll be a shatter from Gushue. Oh and that'll put it my. away. And that what, what a fitting way to see that end is just a wrecking ball slowly self-destruct as they try and make it towards the point. I mean, there was there was light for the hunters there. We talk about control maps, Matt, how they're definitely more of a fundamental brand of Overwatch, definitely much more team fight oriented. Maps like Hollywood are incredibly positionally I intense. Just, it, it, I have two questions. Where was this Hangzhou map number one? Because uh, they look great for maps t two through uh, four. And then what kind of happened to the Hunters? It just seemed like they completely fell apart in terms of like ultimate usage and positioning. Like They, they were... Uh, they were two steps behind all the time where it looked like they were going to put together a really close series, a good game here against Hangzhou. The one thing I say about Hangzhou, Matt, their maneuvering was was very, very good. And on, on control maps, it's a little bit harder to yep. pull that off. You kind of just have to sort of run head first at the point and try and win a fight there on fundamentals. So, I mean, they were so good. Even without, you know what's crazy? Even without Lucio, they're playing the Zen Batiste combo on attack. They're still able to outmaneuver Chengdu, who, who oh, have high ground advantage, yeah. they have speed boost, they have everything. Let's talk about our player of the match, though, Matt, uh, while we have yes. a moment. Uh, it's going to be Adora today. Uh, yes. Huge impact player. Uh, fantastic May play as well, really controlling the battlefield. And we saw just how oppressive that became on Hollywood. Uh, and he was great with the May walls, right? Uh, after map one, when the game started to get to a little bit more stable of compositions, and Chengdu wanted to play aggressive, he made them play recklessly aggressive, using the May walls to block people off, create situations where you can isolate people, and he was a massive player for Hangzhou. And Hangzhou, that's that's perfect for them. They're playing sometimes without a Lucio, and whatever they can do to split off individuals, it looked really cere cerebral from the spark. A lot of set plays got brought in. I'm really pleased. This whole series, honestly, from start to finish, there was a lot of interesting stuff. It was, it was really easy to talk about, uh, you know, what we saw from these two teams because a lot of striking yeah. differences between them, you know. Chaos at times. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the Spark, you know, were known as a very aggressive team sort of way back in the day. They dominated GOATs, and you can still see how that coordination, that positioning-centric style, when they get to exert that over a, a chaotic sort of individualistic team uh, like the Hunters can actually prevail. I'm just... Uh... I'm a bit disappointed in what we saw from Chengdu in the later half of the series, though. I, I kind of got my hopes up a little bit, I guess, after game number one. It looked like they kind of bounced back sure. after their game against NYXL. And then it looked like it, it almost devolved into something even worse. And yesterday, like yesterday, they were just losing like consistent fights because New York was just kind of outplaying them in the game. Uh, this today, though, looked like Chengdu was just a little bit all over the place, and they never really gave themselves a great opportunity in a lot of these fights and moments, whether it was just bad positioning, throwing ultimates out there for no value and no return on the other side. So it's a really odd game. So you think they lost today. for different reasons uh, you know, to New York yes, and, absolutely, and Hangzhou? Yeah. I mean, New York, they just got outplayed, right? I mean, New York played phenomenal. Chengdu didn't play bad. I mean, they, they were winning fights against New York yesterday because they were doing a much better job in positioning sure. and ult usage. Today, it just looked all over the place. Well, I mean, uh, I, I mean I'm mean, i still impressed to see Hangzhou now sort of fight back a bit. These two teams are, I mean, as far as their records suggest, they're, they're, they're middle of the table, but in this region... They're minnows. I mean, ha uh, Hangzhou just needs a few more games against Chengdu. And they'll be right back <laughs> in the, the leaderboards, yeah. right? Yes, not every team has the luxury of going up against, on paper, weaker teams to sort of pad out their stats a little bit. <laughs> uh, our next match doesn't feature any weak teams at all. Oh, no. This is uh, a very hotly anticipated game. We won't hold you up. We'll get to that as soon as we can. The last time the Seoul Dynasty and the Dragons played, it was 3-1 for Seoul. But this time, so much is different. I mean, I'm in my office, all right? I, I've turned my house upside down to, to cast games. Like, a lot's changed since last year. So stick around, and let's see how the Shanghai Dragons shape up against the Seoul Dynasty. What a match. You don't want to miss it.